Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. So in episode 14 of our ongoing series where we are refurbishing this 2006 Land Rover LR3 with the V8 petrol engine, we are going to be removing both front seats. We're going to go from this ratty, torn up leather to this complete teardown to this with these custom leather seat covers made specifically for the LR3 from lseat.com. So let's get started. Obsession. Brought to you by Waffle Square. Now I'm not paid nor sponsored by lseat.com. I paid for these seat covers with my own money. Uh, I chose lseat because the website was really easy to navigate. You can go by make, model, year, and see the selection of what they have available. Once you get to the specific vehicle year, you have a choice of leather color, of stitching color. You can also have a custom logo embroidered onto the seats. Go check out their website. I think it's pretty neat. Make sure you leave yourself plenty of time for delivery because they make these on demand and it's going to take a couple weeks for them to get to you. All right, let's start the process. Now we're going to be moving both seats back and forth a bunch to get all of the bolts out. So until we disconnect the battery, I want to keep the charge level healthy. So I've got it set up to my trickle charger and you can see just from me doing the driver's seat, the charge level has already dropped down. Now, before we get started, I'm not a mechanic. I just dress like one on YouTube. So you're just coming along for the ride to see how I'm doing it. And I'm going to start right here at the front uh, of the seat. There are three plastic panels that we want to take off. So a little removal tool like this one that's spring loaded is super helpful. The first one we're going to start with is the one nearest the threshold here. And this one needs to be pulled off this way. So towards the center of the seat. And it easily breaks away right here but there are two metal clips right on this side. So we're gonna get our tool right down in there and just pop those out. See that? Nice. That one has one, the other one has two. And that exposes our first T50 bolt. So I'm gonna get in here with my little electric ratchet And that is one of five. Now, since we're right here and the seat is forward a bit, we're gonna take off this cover piece here. It also has the same kind of metal clips. I think it has four of them. There's two over here and two over here. So let's get behind it with our tool and start prying this off. There we go. And there we go. One, two, three, four of these little metal clips. Now this big plug right here is what we're going to be removing uh, later on in the seat removal process. But for right now, while we're here, let's pull out all these little retaining clips that are attaching it to the metal frame. That came out easy. If you get underneath them, you know, they don't break as often. There we go. Good. All right, now we're looking at the other side of the seat. So here is the center console. And here's this little cover plate. And that one also pops out towards the center of the seat. So once again, I'm gonna get my tool on the inside area. You can hear that pop out. It's got two, there we go, and there we go, same two metal clips. There's two. Well, for now, that's everything up front, so there's a couple things I want to do. I want to move the seat all the way forward. I want to uh, 
take out the recline so the seat's up like this. It's going to make it easier to get it out of this door. And while we're sitting right here, I also want to uh, remove the seat belt. So these buttons don't work unless the key's in the ignition. So let's put our key in and we'll change it to the first click only. Let's come forward. Recline up. Good. Now we can turn off that annoying sound. We're ready to take off the seat belt and then go into the back. So come on over here, let me show you this one. All right, let's get our bearings. We are uh, at the passenger side and here's the front of the seat. Moving back to where the seat belt is, is this cover plate. All you have to do is pull it up and it comes right off. Ew. And that exposes right there our T50 bolt and also this wire uh, that is the seat belt alarm for the passenger. So let's disconnect that first. So this plug is held on uh, to the frame of the seat with a little retainer clip so we can get right in here with the tool. We can pop that out and that gives us more access to the plug so we can see how to remove it. So to get that out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, you go in this slot and you can feel, you push down on the little retaining piece and it'll slide out. And now those two are separated. When we get into better lighting, I'll pop this guy back onto that little spot where it was retaining. But we're right here ready to take out the T50 for the seat belt. So if you take off the cover and you can't get to the seat belt, you come over here, lower the seat, and it exposes itself to you. How great is that? All right, now we're on to the back of the seat. And this also has two plates that need to be removed. However, both of these are gonna go up instead of in towards the center of the seat. First plate is this one right here. So let's just get under it. Now there is a metal plate right beneath this one. So if you get too aggressive of an angle like this and you try to get under it, you're really just on the metal plate. So make sure when you get here with your pry tool that you're just getting under the plastic and not the metal plate. There we go. There. Good. There we go. So there's two there and two up top. We also have a T50 right here and then one up and over the rail behind here. This one's really helpful to have a small extension. All right, let's compare all six bolts that we've taken out. A quick look at the front two and the rear three T50 bolts shows they are exactly the same length. So no worry about mixing those up. The only one that's different is the one holding on the seat belt. All right, back to the front. We want to move the seat back and expose about an inch of the rail because there's going to be uh, some more Torx bit bolts underneath the seat and you want the frame moved about right there so you can get to them when it comes time to remove the seat to change out the leather. So let's reach in here once again. Move her on back. So when you see the frame here for the seat, 
about out about an inch or two. I think that's going to be just about right. All right, the last thing to remove to get these seats out are the plugs that supply power to the seat, the motors going back and forth, the heater, but they also supply power to the airbags. There's one on each outside of the seats. So we can't just disconnect those plugs because it could cause a fault and it's also dangerous. It could potentially set off the airbag. So we're gonna disconnect the battery first. So we're gonna move forward here and disconnect the battery in just a minute. Uh, but I wanted to tell you, since this channel is all about obsessing over things, I did separate all the plastic trim pieces and mark them passenger and driver so that uh, we can wash them and keep them together so there's no confusion when it comes time to put them back on. All right, let's move up to the battery. These two pieces of trim are identical, so you don't have to worry about them. I love that light. I reviewed it in this video. All right, here we are, 13 millimeter to loosen up the lead here. I'm gonna set this aside because I'm gonna use my awesome grip mat to help us keep it from making inadvertent contact once it's off. There we go. All right, let's do 15 minutes for safety to let all the possible power bleed out of those airbag um, solenoids or whatever could be in there. We kept it straight. It's all there, ain't it? Everything marked, everything remembered. Yeah, you kept it real good. You ain't been slack at all. So while we're waiting to remove the chairs, let's open up this replacement pack from L Seats and see what the quality looks like. So this is the inside and it is nicely padded. Ah, that leather looks really nice. Yeah, that clip is really well stitched onto there. So are these going all the way around the perimeter of the front. Here's the little pull through tabs that give the seat that taut kind of look to it. Another one's over here and here. Really pretty stitching. Here are the headrests. Yeah, that is pretty stitching. I don't see any pre-cutting for the armrests. You must get it to where it's supposed to be and then make your own incision. Here's one of the backrests. Again, really nice looking stitching. And look at this. It's got the side airbag tag on it. This is something I was curious about, but you're still going to have the storage space behind the backrest. And it's got some sort of kind of plastic or vinyl piece to keep this from sagging. Very nice. Here's the armrests. Now you could go wild and get this stitching a different color than the leather. They're totally customizable on their website. The seats appear to be indistinguishable from each other. Everything looks the same. I don't think you'll have to worry about which one is left or right. And the same for the two headrests. Well, after all that, I think more than enough time has passed. Let's get the plug out. So if you look right in the center here, you'll see that is a seven millimeter little bolt and it's captive meaning it's going to stay with the plug itself let's get it all the way unscrewed from the back like that then that comes out and reveals all these little sets of wiring that are going all throughout the seat and that's all there is as far as wiring 
All right, so those of you who might be new to the channel, this is Aspen, my daughter, whose vehicle this is going to be. It's why we're refurbishing is to give it to her. So we've been talking about what we're gonna find underneath these seats when we pull them <laughs> up, because we're thinking it's gonna be pretty gross. So we're taking bets. Uh, leave a comment down in the description. Which side do you think is gonna be the dirtiest, driver or passenger? How much money are we gonna find? How much glitter is gonna be in there? <laughs> And how many french fries? All right, uh, leave your comments below, but let's find out. You wanna hop in the back? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> you ready for this? Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Bottle caps. <laughs> Bottle caps. Ooh. French fry receipts. A Whopper Junior coupon. Put that in your front pocket. Uh, what else do you see? I see a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a $5 Whopper <laughs> coupon, a hair thingy. I don't I know over there. what that, that's for like contact somebody's lenses. contact lenses. All right, we got a quarter, 50 cents. Oh, this project's gonna pay for itself. Oh, you know what that is? What? That goes on the armrest. Ooh, that's a good find. Thought that's we were gonna have to order that. Oh, there's a penny stuck to a French fry. Ooh, there's two pennies there's stuck two. together. That's Disgusting. nasty. Oh, we got a lot of cleanup to do. I wonder what that goes to. I think that was the contact lens. <laughs> that's nasty. That's disgusting. All right, here goes number two. Why does this one seem heavier? Free makeup. <laughs> We gotta get up and over this big old amplifier. It's coming. Oh, we hit the penapalooza, that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> I knew we'd find a french fry. Woo! Yeah, we had, like, Cherry chapstick, we you put that right on like your lips. four over there and we have about three french fries over here. Yeah, ugh. Uh, all right, oh, here's the uh, cigarette lighter guy. He can go right back in there. Wonder how long ago he dropped down it. there. No, but it helps to keep anything from falling in there. So I got 50 cents over here. There's plenty of french fries over here. There's a band-aid. There's a pearl. So which one do you think is the dirtier? Uh. This one has more French fries. Yeah. <laughs> this one has more money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's a Band-Aid off of someone's finger. Okay. Well, all right. Guess it's time to clean all this up. Fun. Thanks. <laughs> Final count was $1.71 and a really nice fake fingernail. But since my audience is 99% men, I'll just go ahead and throw that away. All right, let's get our bearings. So this is the shoulder area of the seat. Here's the headrest, and this is the grip that goes from the headrest down to that shoulder area. And we wanna take that off. So the first thing we wanna do, if you see me push back on the leather and the foam, is we wanna get this trim piece out of the way. And that simply just gets pulled downward like this. There, and we can slide it out. And then when we flip it over, we'll be able to back out that uh, Torx bit. Let's do the same on the other side. So now I have the seat laying on its side. So once again, here's the shoulder, here's the headrest. On the back of the seat is the T27 bit. And now we can grab onto the handle and we want to pull it straight away from the shoulder and the headrest at the same time and it just comes right out. Easy. Now let's do the other side. And now we can lift the headrest up and there is a little catch right here. If we need it, we can push on that to release it. Speaking of easy, let's remove the armrest. So this little trim piece just comes straight out. This T27 bit feels a little bit loose in here, but we can still get it. Now the trick to getting this armrest off 
is rotating the armrest up to a 45 degree angle. And that allows you to pull it off because there's this pin that corresponds with that opening. Now this is from an old seat cover that used to be on the vehicle. Now I tried like crazy but could not get uh, this pin out. It is like uh, a spring-loaded pin inside there so I think when the time comes we're just gonna have to cut an opening and stretch over this washer. Straight down from the armrest bracket is this trim piece uh, that covers up the backrest. We're gonna want to take this off. Now there's two Phillips screws, uh, one back here and unfortunately one right behind the seat belt. So we have to temporarily remove this uh, seat belt bracket in order to get to that screw. And now we can see that screw. The other one's on the other side, right about here. Pretty easy to find. Once the two screws are removed, it's got a little retaining clip right here, so we need to push up. See that? And this is where the leather has attached here, so you can see why we needed to get in there. Now let's remember when we're putting this bolt back in that they use Loctite since it was for the seat belt. We're going to do the same. I'm going to hold it in place for now. All right, let's remove the leather off the headrest. There's simply a little clip here that you pull back and it exposes both the front and the back. And now we can just cut through, being careful not to mar up the foam. And there we go. It's in good shape. I can't wait to redo this ratty armrest. So, this is the uh, dial that raises or lowers the position for comfort of the armrest. And it looks like we're just gonna stretch the leather eventually around that because that rod doesn't come out at all. So we're gonna wanna punch a hole uh, in the leather and then just stretch it around here. And I'll, I'll show you that so that you have confidence in my decision. But for now, Let's just start cutting everything off. Looks like they used some sort of glue right around here. See that? Oh, a piece of the armrest is broken off there. Yeah, right there. Oh well. Okay, so I tried removing some screws and things and nothing easily got this rod off, but if you look here, this leather is very stretchy. I can just stretch it right around the dial. So we'll do the same thing. I've got some leather making tools. We can punch the biggest hole that I have in it so that it doesn't tear and uh, we'll work through it. All right, we've got the chair tipped over on its back, exposing the bottom of the seat here. And this is the crossbar of concern. This is why you have to move the seat up enough that you can get at these two T40 bolts. So let's start with them. And while we're here, there's a couple wire retaining clips. We just wanna pull those wires out. All right, there's two more way back here. So I'm gonna get my bit lined up. So those four bolts are the only mechanical connections with the uh, seat. There are a couple plugs that we're going to have to disconnect one from that big loom and another one over here. Let me reposition the camera and show you. So as we peer down between the seat and the frame, you can see this 
covered wire right there, we need to pry back that plastic loom off of the seat pan. And straight across from that other clip, there is this plug. We want to squeeze and remove. Coming up from this big hole in the seat pan is this wire that is for the heater. And this goes right in to this big electric plug receptacle. And all the way back over here uh, is a black plug and we need to remove that one. You have to go underneath here and get a flat tip screwdriver in and remove that one. So let's do that now. And there we go. See it coming down. And out, nice. And with all those disconnections made, the seat pan comes right out. So let's pull the leather off the seat. First thing we wanna do is remove these plastic retainer clips. And then all the way around the front and side perimeter are these little clips that clip into the metal box. So we want to remove each of those. And what I found is just a flathead screwdriver gets them the best. See that? And with that, we can start to cut. Be really careful on this side because the heating element is right here. See, all this is the heating element. So right in here, and here, here, and here are these rails. And they are held in to an internal rail in the foam with little clips. And these clips are called hog rings. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. You can uh, try to pry them open like this to get the old seat cover out, then put the new seat cover in and try to pry them with uh, pliers back. But instead, I'm going to use these hog ring pliers. I'm going to cut out the old ones and I'm going to install new ones with this tool. And it's going to go a lot quicker if we're not trying to individually pry open every one of these. And that way this bar comes right out. Now once I get all of these off, I'll go in there and I will um, remove each little piece. All right, all those are clipped off. And now there's a plastic piece right here that we can just peel off. And there we go. All right, let's take off the leather around the backrest. Now up here at the top, we already have these two big squares where those handles went into, so we can just start cutting right there. Same thing on the front here, we have rows of the hog rings. So since I'm gonna be cutting those, I'm gonna put safety glasses on. Little, sometimes they fly out at you. Now there's a strap that goes around the side opposite from the armrest. And the new seat covers have the strap itself, but they don't have this metal clip here that pull the two together. So I'm gonna make sure I retain those. All right, so the seat is now standing up. We're looking at the back and let's take off the back portion. As you see right here, there is a plastic uh, clip that is up here on a metal bar. See that? So we just need to press that off. There we 
go. Now there are two strings right here, one here and one here. And those are holding the front, the sides that go right along your shoulders, holding those in. So we don't wanna cut those, we wanna pull them off. And there's a little hook up here in this metal. So we wanna pull that up and unhook it just like that. And then we feed those through from the front. Now let's come down here and there's two plastic kind of French cleat clips down here from the front and the rear. We just want to undo those. There we go. Now if we lift this up, we'll see two more plastic retainer clips. That's holding the back on at these plastic pieces. And we have those plastic pieces on the new seat, so let's just pop these off. And that's them right there. And that allows us to take the back off. Now those ropes that we disconnected up here go around the front and they come back here. And those are also hooked in, so we just wanna pull that little cord like a rip cord and remove that. Now I'm just gonna cut off the plastic piece that's going under the seat. Right there. And out comes the front. Great time to clean up. Now here were those two ropes with the clips that hold the sides of the backrest on. Um, you do not get these with the replacement seat covers. So we want to hold on to these and keep them. So I spent some time yesterday covering the passenger side seat from top to bottom and I think it turned out fantastic. So let's start right now with the driver's side seat. I wanna start with the headrest and I have the seat down on the ground and the headrest on the backrest because it's gonna give me the ability uh, to use my weight. Whereas if it was on a table surface, you would just have the two posts in the way. I just think it would be a lot more difficult. Now, some of them, it's gonna be easier to start with them inside out. However, the headrest and the armrest are not that way. You just have to deal with it being right side out. All right, it is a struggle to get this headrest on, but I've noticed that if you come over here on the corners that are bulging and physically push them in as you pull down, that is helpful. Um, yesterday when I did the headrest for the passenger seat, I let the headrest sit in the sun for a while and it didn't make a huge difference, but I do feel like it was a little easier time than I'm having right now. Nonetheless, we're getting it. All right, now we can take it off and bring it over to the table to fold in these clips. I've noticed that if you fold and clasp these two halves together right away, the tension in the leather is still too strong and they tend to pop open within a short period of time. All right, now it's time to put the two cords in. Remember the big, long, sharp hook is the one that goes up top. So we're gonna insert from this direction and go up here. And if you wanna pre-stretch this little piece here with a dowel or something, that'll probably be helpful. It's a little bit tight in some spots. So I just took this wooden dowel and did that. And there will come a time where it'll be helpful to have uh, one of these 
electrical cable fishing tools to push it through, and you'll see that here in a moment. Right. Start down at the bottom, get it started. Now you can just sit here and kind of try to caterpillar it through, but I found that it is easier to push it along with the snake. You just have to be careful that the little sharp tip, uh, if it gets into this fabric, that you back it out a little bit and try again. Oh, there we go. Oof, that is not easy. All right, one more to go over here. Utilizing the old armrest cover, I was able to locate approximately where the hole should be placed. But as you can see in this picture, it looked like it was a bit too far back and was actually getting into this sharp spot. So I'm actually gonna put the hole a little further up to try to get it away from that edge right there. I marked the hole. I've got my largest hole punch for leather. And, oops. And I beat it a few times with a block of wood inside and got most of the hole done. I'm just gonna trim the last little bit. Now you could easily just cut an incision, but this is gonna be visible. Unlike the cuts we're gonna do for the armrest um, where it meets the chair, unlike uh, the cuts that we'll do for the headrest where the headrest is gonna go down and actually cover those holes, this one's gonna be visible every time you raise it up. So I wanted to dress it up a bit with a circular hole punch. Now, once you get it started a bit, it starts to get really tight right here. So what I found was if you can roll back the leather like this, so it's not doubling up on itself. Yeah, I found that that helped out. Now, if you get way off track like this, maybe we should pull back a bit and twist it. Yeah, that's better. And now we're at the point where the hole we made is lined up with the dial. So I'm just gonna pull it back. Good. Now I'm gonna gently pry this up and over because remember this white plastic was broken on this one when we pulled it off. So I don't wanna add to that after doing our repair. Go. All right, I'm gonna put a few drops of super glue right around here. And with the glue in place, I'm just gonna hold it down with some clamps while we work on this backrest and seat. So let's do the seat now. I've got it sat on top, positioned front to back, but we're not gonna just fold it around because the first thing we need to do is peel back and put in all of our hog rings. We've got two sets of hog rings going across and two sets going down the chair. So we'll start with the center two, this one here and this one. And then we'll finish up with the outside ones. I found that that's the easiest. 
So right here and right here, right where you see these two lines, in fact, are where the bars, the center of the bars down there that we're going to put the hog rings around. So this isn't necessary, but I found it was a lot easier to mark right there with the Sharpie. So I know right where I put the holes through this fabric because it's hard to see otherwise. Now we're going to spread apart the jaws, insert the hog ring just like that, put it through the seat first, then, then turn it this way so it's almost parallel with this opening. Push down, hook around the inner bar, and squeeze. And that makes a really good connection. Preload the second one. And fold around. Now we're going to do the same exact thing right here. There we go. And now we'll do the same thing on each side, except these have one, two, three, four spots where we need to put the hog rigs. And all done. Now let's start to wrap it around the top. Now let's start doing all these clips. I found that a flathead screwdriver with your hand out of the way so you don't stab yourself works really well. Now I just want to smooth out these wrinkles. Most of that's going to happen when we clip this into place, but I want to help it along. Now this is one long continuous clip. Push that right into place. Now this is the hole where we're going to put these little panel clips, retainer clips in. So let's not just put it in loose. Let's kind of stretch this a bit and use it to our advantage, right? Like right there. Let's push through and there we go. All right, to start the backrest, I recommend you put it back down at uh, ground level. Now take the backrest and partially invert it. Create a pocket in there to this first bit. And that way you can put it right across the top. You can line up these lines. And bring it down to there, feel in here to make sure everything looks good. And now we can tuck those two ropes through the shoulder area. And then from the back, we'll pull the strings out. So the point goes into the hole and then the little clip grabs it. Now that both of those are in, we can pull this around, this clip right here, and this metal railing loops around. There's an edge right here that we're gonna click it into. And attach our hog rings. 
Now that that's done, we can pull this down a little bit more and do this strap. So this was initially made and stitched right through this eyelet opening, but all we have to do is slide it through that way. We're gonna push it through here and connect the other side right here. So here we go. All right, next we want to use these little panel clips through this hole and into this plastic. So I'm just going to set it behind here, pull it taut. That's an 11 30 seconds bit. Let's bring it down to the next section. And now we'll do the same thing with these straps. There we go. So here's the bottom of the back. And we need to fold that down and pull this one from the front up and clip those two together like that. And I found that it's helpful to get this one going by pulling it with a screwdriver or something to get it close and then bringing this one around. Once you get those, it's time to stretch this around and put it on this post. So what we're gonna do is figure that's about the halfway mark. Well, all the remaining parts of the reassembly process to include actually bolting down the seat have all been demonstrated to you in reverse order, so I'm sure you can figure it out. And believe me, I'm aware this video is getting long. Tomorrow is Father's Day, and I don't want to be working on any of this, so I wanted to end this video right now and get it uploaded. Now, this is not an easy project. It's a lot of work, as you can see. Uh, but I hope that I've answered any questions you might have of what you need, what it's going to take, how much time to set aside before you embark on this endeavor. So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the channel. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content. There's a lot more videos to come on refurbishing our LR3, and I hope you stay tuned for those. I'm going to leave a link to the website for lseat.com, and then all the various other items items and tools that I use that I think will be helpful in the description below. Now, full disclosure, those will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month. It helps to justify all the time it takes setting up multiple angle shots to entertain you. Now, before we go, I wanted to give a special shout out to Samuel, one of our viewers who watched the video where I was fixing the tailgate and noticed that 
on the bumper, one of these little plastic pieces was missing. He reached out to me and said that he had some and offered to send them to me. And he did, Samuel, thank you very much. They're gonna go right on and replace the ones that are missing. And if they look nicer, maybe I'll replace all of them since you gave me so many. Thank you very much. And thank you to all of you that have been leaving comments below. I read every comment and I respond to all the ones that are courteous. So until next time, thank you for watching.